their reasoning was. All right, well, thank you, Kat. And speaking of World of Warcraft, we're going to go back for some more bonus coverage now. This is the Q&A part of the panel you just saw with the class system. So here's the Q&A. We'll be back in a few minutes to get ready for the closing ceremonies, but enjoy this right now. Are you going to support a merge to, like, or is all that effort that one guild did going to kind of get discarded? The way it would work would be, for example, if, if you would have to choose which guild you were going to merge into. So if people left their guild and then went into the other guild, they would get all the benefits of the other guild when they join. So say if you have two, right, and one disbands and the first guild takes on all those members, then at that point, all those new members are going to get all the benefits of the first guild, like all the talent tree things. They'd get access to all that guild currency. They'd get access to their guild heirlooms. But the general idea is that we're going to support all types of play styles as far as guild advancement goes. Um, it's not going to be exclusively guild advancement through raiding, for example. So even though you may not be getting um, your guild advancement by raiding because you don't make up 75% of the raid, you'll still be getting guild advancement by doing things like daily quests. So your guild can still progress. Thanks. All right, next question. So uh, all of the talents that you've talked about for guilds have been like quality of life sorts of um, convenience things. Are there going to be any really crunchy talents, you know, things that raiders will want to have? We definitely think there's a lot of them that raiders would want to have. Like, I think Corey gave some good examples of the, the conveniences that raiders would want to have. But it is a, an important philosophy of ours that we don't put character power in the guild talents. The reason we don't do that is because we would be we'd be forcing it at that point, right? Everybody would feel like, well, the reason we can't beat this boss is because our guild level hasn't gotten up to 20 or whatever. We don't want that to be the case. We want it to feel like more like fun and perks. All right. Next question. Hey there, guys. Um, as part of this guild advancement system, are there going to any plans to introduce more guild bank slots or make those transferable from one server to another if a guild wants to transition from one server to another? We definitely have the concept of being able to buy additional bank slots with guild currency. We don't know how many we're going to do yet or how big they are, but it's definitely something we want to do as a reward, that you could go ahead and buy a whole bank slot just with the currency. We have also, we've also discussed the possibility of doing a guild transfer service, a lot like, you know, paid character change, that kind of thing. Um, because as we put more stuff into what a guild means and what it is, it's more and more important that that identity sticks as you switch from one server to another. So it's definitely important. Thanks. Next question. In the uh, rated uh, battleground system, how are you going to stop it from feeling really grindy since you don't lose rating? Uh, like if someone plays 1,000 games and wins 30% versus someone who plays 200 games and wins 90%, uh, how they would match up? Presumably the way that it would stop from feeling grindy is a lot the same way that the arena system doesn't, you know, kind of stops being grindy in that if you play in your first four wins, for example, you might get all the points you need for the week, right? You might hit your point limit for the week. And any games beyond that are just the possibility of raising your rating. Arena system's pretty similar to that in that, you know, once you've gotten to a rating that you're pretty satisfied with in terms of points, the only reason you keep playing is because you think you can advance your rating. Um, yet a lot of players kind of feel like 10 games and they're sort of done and it's all right. Um, so there will be players out there that play a lot more games because they want to push their rating. But ultimately, you've got to get a group large enough together to be able to do that. It's not like you can just jump in the queue willy-nilly. It's a little bit harder organizationally to pull off. Next question. Um, there are certain um, raid buffs like, um, that are really strong in raids, but when you put them in an arena like Bloodlust, um, they can be, like, in, especially in 5v5, like, is there going to be any look how to make that more evened out? I think that uh, that's a legitimate problem. I, I think it's pretty isolated to, to Bloodlust. That's the only one I see that, you know, scales so well in 5v5 that, that the Shaman class suddenly becomes overrepresented in 5v5. Um, so I think that's a case-by-case -case problem that we'll need to find a way to solve without breaking anything that's really fun and cool about the ability. All right, next question. So with us getting new guild levels and all of that, have you guys considered adding in guild halls? 
Field halls is definitely something that we talked about. Um, I think what it comes down to for us is we really had to decide what were we going to spend our time on and what features would mean the most to the players. You know, something like a guild hall is really cool um, to have from a visual standpoint to look at, but as far as benefits to the players, there's not a lot of things that, that, we, you know, that we thought would actually really benefit you because we want players to be in the cities doing their professions, running around the cities, you know, so we didn't want to take all those things and go and put them in like an instance where you're separated out from the rest of the world. So when we kind of put everything together, this really looked like the way to go was to just go with the features that we thought players could use the most and leave the visual stuff. You know, if we have time to get to it, it would be great, but it wasn't high on the priority list. Thanks. All right, next question. <laughs> with, the, with the guild leveling system, I know it might be kind of like a grind, but is, do you have any plans on diminishing returns so that um, at a certain point, like when you reach level 10, doing normal dungeons isn't going to be as effective? So that way you don't have people just power leveling their guild level and stuff like that. I, I, could, I could imagine putting a limit on the amount of guild XP that a guild couldn't get total in a day or something like that to keep it from just becoming, you know, pressuring the guilds into playing as much as they possibly can or at least having those top 20 earners contribute as much as they possibly can in a day. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we would want those, those limits to be really forgiving. Uh, but that's still up for discussion. I don't, don't know for sure exactly how we're going to handle that yet. It's also going to scale by level. So for example, you know, and we're, we're kind of looking at maybe like a 10 level range. So killing a boss between 1 and 10 would be worth a different amount of guild XP than killing a boss that's, say, level 80. So you know, we don't want a guild just to take everyone and go run back to dead mines and kill Van Cleef you know, week after week because that's the way they would level it up. So we definitely want to scale it so that it feels like it's worth it to do that, you know, for the new people that are leveling up, but we don't want that to be the norm. Thanks. All right, looks like we have time for two or three more questions here, so next question. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any system in place that will allow guilds to use the guild heirlooms for end game rating. Are you guys planning on having that be weaker items like the current heirlooms? Uh, anything that could maybe track with the guild level such that they would continue to be useful for hardcore guilds versus casual guilds, that sort of thing. I would say that it's definitely under consideration. Yeah. It's one of those things that we'll talk about doing. Um, if we feel like we can do it in a way that, that feels really good and doesn't, doesn't end up feeling like less loot for an individual player, or anything like that, like I could see doing it as a bonus item drop on a boss, that kind of thing. Definitely. Thanks. All right. Next question. Hi, I'm part of a uh, fairly decent sized uh, 13 guild um, alliance. Um, each of these guilds has, uh, has uh, uh, about, uh, well, each of these guilds has their own personality. Um, and will definitely pro be probably be specking out their guilds in different ways. Um, but as part of a large alliance, uh, we're also, um, we, we have a lot of different PvP groups and we also have different raid groups. Is there any way that, that we'll be able to kind of get some of the benefit, like say if we have like 50% of uh, Guild A and 50% of Guild B, uh, to kind of uh, increase the personality of each of our PvP or raid groups? This is where it gets complicated. <laughs> I think that's the main reason for, in a situation like that, it's almost like those groups are so separated, they're almost like their own individual guilds. You know, so them specking into, if, like you said, if there's a group that really likes PvP, then they should spec PvP and, and go that route if that's what they want to do. Um, but the, the idea of merging them together and having them share abilities isn't something that we currently have on the table, like through an alliance or something like that. Thanks. Okay, we have time for one more question. Okay, apparently one more after this one. Um, you guys discussed a lot of um, nice little guild conveniences, for example, showing uh, the list of all the profession people in the guild. Um, I was wondering if there's any plans to um, show, for example, show all the characters tied to a particular person. Like we have a lot of um, altaholics 
in our guild who have upwards of five, six characters in the guild, and it's hard to keep track of, you know, what character, who's on who, who belongs to who, or um, uh, whose DKP belongs to whose character type deal, so, and the notes just sometimes aren't enough to keep track of all that. That's definitely something that we've talked about over the course of actually working on the system. And like you saw, there was a drop down there in that pane where the achievements were, or where the, um, the professions were. Achievements is an example of something else we were thinking about putting there, where you could see the ranks of different people. So I think it's just, um, it, that's something that we would look into. Definitely a great suggestion. And we've got room in the UI to do something like that. So it just comes down to, you know, where does it fit in the overall kind of you know, priority list of what we want to get in there. But it's a great idea. Thanks, all right, this is our last question for this panel. Hi guys, um, I'm a really big fan of the WoW mobile armory and I use it all the time. But as a guild leader, there's a lot of things that I'd really like it to be able to do that I can't, like scheduling guild events mobily or just even looking at some other stuff that I don't have access to right now. With all these new abilities and other things you're going to be adding, is there going to be more integration with the mobile armory? Well, there, there is more work that's going to be done on the mobile armory. They have more kind of feature plans that are going to be coming down the line for it. Um, those aren't things that we can talk about right now in this panel, but uh, there will be more coming forward over time. Great, thanks. Hey there, Blizzard fans. Get ready, because me and the band are going to bring down BlizzCon tonight! <laughs>Wrapping things up here, all the you know the panels are done, and now we're just getting ready for the closing ceremonies. I'm Jeff Keeley here with Cat Hunter and Joe Garcia as we get ready to uh, celebrate all things BlizzCon and rock out with that man, the Prince of Darkness, exactly Ozzy Osbourne. The way I want to go out with it's going to be great. We're going to celebrate everything tonight. We've got everyone over in uh, the main hall here, ready for closing ceremonies, which will be uh, Paul Sams will be on stage, who joined us here. Also, Ozzy Osbourne and Level 80 Elite Torn Chieftains. Quickly, uh, guys, what was your favorite moment? I just have to say, everything's changed. I'm leaving here not knowing exactly what WoW is going to be like a year from now, and I love that feeling. What about you, Jeff? Um, I love the fact that um, StarCraft, they decided to do the, the first-person perspective, the actual single-player campaign on the floor this year versus multiplayer, which is what they presented last year, um, to actually get to see the in-game cinematics, which is amazing for me, being an yeah. RPG player. So Fantastic nice. storytelling. Also, Diablo 3, the announcement of the Monk class. And then today, they even broke news with Trisha Helfer from Battlestar Galactic. Active. She's going to be one of the voices in StarCraft 2. So it's been an amazing BlizzCon, a lot of great memories, a lot of great games to play. Now we're going to head over to the closing ceremonies, uh, lots of great stuff. And remember, Ozzy Osbourne is coming up live in high definition. Enjoy the closing ceremonies of BlizzCon 09. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Sams. so far I don't know about you but I haven't had this much fun since well I guess last BlizzCon as Mike mentioned during the opening ceremony 2010 is going to be an awesome year for Blizzard gamers we're gonna ship StarCraft 2 next year along with the upgraded Battle.net service and then about half the company is going to mysteriously call out sick for about the same amount of time it takes to finish the single player campaign, including me. How many of you were able to play the single player this weekend? All right, now, what do you think? All right, well, on that note, I do have one more exciting announcement for you. I want Ozzy too now. Before we start the beta test for StarCraft II, we're going to randomly select 1,000 of you to receive a guaranteed beta slot. This selection pool includes everyone who bought a ticket for BlizzCon as well as those who signed up and received the live DirecTV and internet stream packages. 